I'm painting backdrops with sky, haze, and clouds on Ron's trains and things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a recent video, I showed you how I installed 8th inch masonite hardboard backdrops on the new expanded section of my layout. I showed you how I covered all the screw heads and the seams with drywall mud and tape sanded them and got them fully prepped for painting uh, and doing the backgrounds on those backdrops. Well, today I'm going to show you how I paint sky, haze, and clouds on my backdrops. Now, I know there are a lot of different kinds of backdrops and different people have their preferences between painted scenes and photo backdrops. And in my case, I like to use a combination of the two. I like to paint the sky and the clouds on my backdrops because many commercial photo backdrops, the, the sky, the clouds just look photoshopped. They don't look quite like they have the right perspective and don't look quite realistic. I really like the realism of the process that I use for painting those clouds. So today we're going to be painting the sky, getting a haze from from the horizon up and getting those clouds painted on a section of the backdrop and I'll show you exactly how I do that. So let's head on over to that new section of the layout and I'll show you exactly how I go about painting sky, haze, and clouds. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com, link in the description. As we get started painting the backdrop, uh, I want to tell you a, a few important items. First of all, uh, you're going to notice that uh, the backdrop has been primed in, in white. Uh, I applied a, a primer coat uh, for two reasons. Number one, with the combination of the very dark brown hardboard and the white drywall mud, it makes a lot of contrast in that background color. And if you try to paint the, the, the blue or your, your finished paint over the top of that, uh, that contrast will tend to show through and it'll show those white spots where you have done the, the, the drywall mud. We don't want that. So I want to get a nice consistent background color so that I get a consistent color on uh, the, the paint for the backdrop. But also, uh, this helps give a consistent uh, uh, adhesion for the paint itself. Uh, masonite has a tendency on its face to be pretty slick, and so uh, regular paint doesn't always like to stick to it the best. It's really easy for it to, to, uh, to mar, to chip, to peel. By putting a, a primer on it, uh, that's made to, to adhere to uh, a variety of surfaces. It gives a nice consistent ad adhesion surface for the paint. It's going to make our paint come out looking really, really good. Now, i talk a little bit about the paint that I'm going to use today. Uh, and I want you to know that this is one situation where you know, really a very inexpensive paint will work for you probably the best. Uh, what I'm using today are uh, just some regular interior latex house paints uh, in, uh, in a flat variety. So uh, about as inexpensive an interior latex paint as you could possibly go. It's all water-based and again, it's a flat. We don't want a shine or, or a gloss to our sky at all. We want a nice flat look. Uh, as far as colors are concerned, uh, I just choose a blue that looks the most like a sky blue to me. Look up high in the sky whenever you're looking at uh, choosing your, your sky color, as we're going to be blending this color a little bit, but we want the, the sky color to be the color that we'll notice the highest up in the sky. That'll be the, the deepest blue color. Now in my case, uh, you can see over my shoulder here, uh, I'm matching this new painted backdrop into some existing backdrop and that's provided a little bit of a challenge for me because that backdrop was painted nine years ago and not only can I not get that exact color of paint, uh, I can't even get that brand of paint locally anymore. Uh, so I had to go uh, get the closest thing I could find in a different brand and a, and a different color scheme. Uh, but we're going to be doing some things to blend the color in between the two. The other color we're using is a white and just a plain bright white flat latex paint 
uh, just like we're using for the blue, and we'll be blending those together. Now, the tools for the job, first of all, for applying the blue, I'm going to be using a roller. Uh, now, this is a wide enough backdrop I could use a full-size uh, roller like you might roll interior walls with, but I really like working with these small rollers. Uh, helps me work in, in, in small sections uh, as I go. It takes a little longer to put the paint on, but I, I just like the way that these work. And we want to make sure whatever size roller we're using that we get a short napped roller, uh, and that, that is a roller that is made for flat walls or flat ceilings, not for texture. A longer nap is going to actually provide some texture to the paint, and we don't really want that on the rolled part. When it comes to the white, we'll be brushing the white on, and so I've got... Uh, uh, three different brushes I'm going to be using here. First, I have a flat two inch brush, and then I have a, a, a one inch brush that uh, is, is, is old, and we'll talk to you a little bit about that, and then a small half inch artist's brush. Uh, to do the haze, we're going to be using uh, this brush to add white to the bottom, and then we'll be brushing it and blending it in as we go up the uh, 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 up the backdrop, blending it into the blue, and so getting that gradiated uh, haze from from almost white to to uh, to a very stark blue at the top. Uh, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. When it comes to making our clouds, I'll be using all three of these, but I'm going to be using a, a stippling uh, technique, which is a stippling is where you take your brush, have a little bit of paint on it, and then you're kind of jabbing it or stabbing it into the, the, the wall or your painted surface. Uh, you can tell by looking at this brush that uh, I've used it for stippling before. It's kind of splayed out and, and not real good if you were brush painting, but for stippling this will work great. And this really is going to be work ideally for making some nice puffy clouds. Same deal with my little half inch brush. Uh, it's kind of splayed out as well because I've used it for stippling before. I'm uh, going to be working from some reference photos and I've got some right here uh, and I'll show them to you on the screen. And I want you to notice some things about the sky uh, that come from these photos. Now, first of all, uh, I want you to notice that if you look down towards the horizon, you see the sky gets lighter and lighter and lighter in color. And that's because at the horizon, you're looking through the greatest distance. You're looking through more of the atmosphere. And you see, so you see more of the haze created by even just a very small amount of moisture and humidity in the air. And so it makes that look lighter color. That's part of what we're going to be trying to recreate today. Also, I want you to notice the clouds uh, in these pictures. First of all, the clouds that, that appear to be right at the horizon are the clouds that are the farthest away, and so naturally they look the smallest, whereas the clouds that are higher in the sky are actually nearer to me when I took this picture, and so they are larger. So we'll be working to create that effect as we put smaller clouds down close to the horizon, larger clouds as we go up higher. Also note that the clouds have a tendency to look more flat on the bottom and more puffy on top. Now these are fair weather cumulus clouds in these photos, and that's what I'm trying to create is a fair weather sky with just some fair weather clouds for interest today. Now you can create other kinds of clouds and there are all kinds of ways to do those different effects, but that's what we're doing today. And then finally, notice that on the bottoms of the clouds or the bottoms of some of the puffs of the clouds, you see kind of a grayish blue shadow uh, created by the fact that the sun isn't penetrating all the way through the cloud, and so it's creating that shadow on the bottom of the cloud. Now, I'm going to be using a wet-on-wet -wet method. That will allow me to blend the blue, the white, even the gray paints together to get uh, a, a gradiated variety of colors. I'm beginning where my new backdrop intersects with the existing backdrop. The primer on the joint has partially covered a couple of the old clouds, and I have about four inches beyond that into which to feather the new paint into the old in order to blend the two slightly different colors together. I first rolled on a generous coat of blue sky paint. You don't want your paint to run or drip, but you do want a good heavy coat of paint here as we're going to be using that wet on wet method. In fact, it's best to apply a coat which will begin to dry quickly and then overcoat it with some more of the same paint. At the joint, I rolled the paint right onto the transition with the old backdrop and then feathered it to blend it with a brush until the line in between the two paint colors disappeared. 
Notice that I had already laid some track in this area and I masked the trap before doing any painting. I'm glad I did because there were some drips that certainly would have gotten on the track and could have been a real problem down the road. I work in small areas at a time, only two to three feet of backdrop so that my paint doesn't dry too quickly. If the paint does begin to dry before finishing an area, you simply need to recoat that area with the blue and keep going from there. I also always work from one direction at all times. So if I'm painting my blue from left to right, I want to paint my haze and clouds from left to right as well. When the blue paint is on, I begin to add haze by painting white paint along the bottom with a brush and then blending it into the blue as I go up. I want the lightest paint to be at the horizon, almost a white, and for the blue to gradually get brighter as you look up towards the top of the backdrop. So I blend the paint about halfway up the backdrop. With the haze applied, I begin to stipple on clouds. The thing to remember is that clouds have many shapes and many different looks. You almost cannot mess this up. If you do paint a cloud that you don't like, all you have to do is add a little blue paint over the top of it and paint it again. Use the stippling action to create the fluffy, puffy billows of the clouds and then fade it along the bottom with a side-to-side -side stroke. This will give you that flat bottom look that is common to many fair weather clouds. When the basic shape is painted, the stippling action pulls some of the blue paint up through the white to create variation in color. This helps to create that sense of shadow and texture in the cloud. I use a small brush to add white highlights to add depth. Remember that the sun will be shining on these clouds from one direction, so I add light along one side of each cloud of the billows and allow the blue to dominate the other side. In this case, I'm adding the white highlights to the left, allowing the right side of the billows to be a little darker. I continue to add more clouds with the same technique, smaller clouds toward the horizon, larger clouds higher up the backdrop. As my next section was around the coved corner, I decided to use a technique where I paint some clouds in an angled line that go off into the distance to indicate direction and distance. I again painted the blue first, then added the white haze exactly as I had done before. I then sketched out the general shape of this line of clouds with a straight brush, and then came back and added the billows and shading to it. If an area seems too white, just stipple it to bring more of the blue through. If it seems too blue, then add a bit more white on top. If the paint starts to get too dry, stop and recoat with blue paint. I had one cloud that I just did not like, so exactly as I said earlier, I got some blue paint on my brush and painted over it and started again, and I liked the outcome of the second cloud far better than I did the first. At this point, we just keep working clouds until you get the results that you like until your backdrop is finished. Well, I'm really happy with these clouds and how the background on the backdrop is coming together. And the fact of the matter is, whenever I start painting clouds, the more I paint them, the better I like them, uh, as naturally practice trying to, it kind of helps us uh, improve as we go. So I know as I paint the rest of these, they're going to look even better. And when these backdrops are completely painted, I'll be sure and post some photos in the community tab here on my channel, as well as on Facebook and some other social media, so you can see how all of the clouds in the background come together. I'm also going to be adding some photo backdrops to the, this uh, these scenes and that's going to be the subject of a future video in a few weeks. Be sure to watch for that as I'll show you exactly how I prep a commercial photo backdrop uh, to uh, install on my layout. Well hey, be sure and check out my Amazon pick of the week in the description down below as well as all the other great links that are down there. Several things that I know you will enjoy and benefit from. And if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links that are on your screen. 
Be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tin Lizzie?